would like to welcome you to another special webinar. We are really excited to have everybody here where we have uh, Martin Frey, we have Michael and, and our CEO Robert uh, with us and our staff are also listening in. Um, we will begin this special webinar with a word of prayer and we would like to ask uh, Jake, our RC Proposal to do that and then I will just give a little introduction before I turn the time to our speakers. Jake? Okay, sir. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee for all the blessings the house bestow upon us, our life, families, friends, and strength. We are truly grateful for them. We also thank thee for allowing us today to meet and share our knowledge and time with one another through this webinar initiative from Ace Philippines. We ask thee to bless this meeting today that our minds will shift into productive and positive perspectives. In every situation we ponder in our daily lives, let the Holy Spirit translate thy commands. We ask thee that our speaker will impart his knowledge to all of us, and he may bless as he continue to bring his expertise to people who are in need. And these things we ask and pray sincerely in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jake. Well, once again, welcome, everyone. Um, before I turn the time to Robert, who will give his welcome message and introduce our speaker today, I would just like to let everybody know we already have 115 joined in. Uh, and and our, our regional coordinators are also um, having a Facebook Live so that more people get to watch this wonderful webinar. Um, we will have a question and answer after the messages of our speakers. And so once again, um, don't, do not type your questions on the chat box. Uh, send it on the Q&A box. All right, there's a Q&A box so that uh, we get to gather them and then we will have a wonderful opportunity to read your questions. Maybe not all questions will be answered today, but we will make the most of our time and answer as many questions so that we learn a lot of things today. And then after the closing prayer, um, later on, we will have our virtual short mini reunion. We will uh, 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 promote as many as we can as panelists so we get to see them as well and say hi to everyone. And then I will give you an announcement, an exciting announcement of uh, that's going to be very, very exciting. Um, I'm going to give you a little hint. A and C, all right? So but I'm going to tell you more a little bit uh, about that after the prayer. We would like to look at Robert. Thank you so much, James. Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to be able to talk to you through a virtual, through a virtual meeting like this. It's, it's so exciting. Um, I wish I could be there with you, and I wish I could be in the Philippines today, but, you know, it's not possible, but at the same time, I'm really happy to be able to communicate to all of you. Today, we have a very special guest. Uh, Martin is a friend of many years. I know Martin since maybe 2004, 2005. That's the first time we met. And yeah. We, 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 we didn't communicate through many years, but then once again, through the academy, we got together and we've been working together for the, maybe the last two or three years in the academy. You know, today is, is my pleasure to introduce Mark, Martin Frey. Frey. Martin is, um, is a world record holder. He is the only person who has climbed the seven summits of the world, that means the, the highest mountains of the world. And also he is the only person who has crossed the seven seas of the world. So nobody in the world had done ev that ever. Even, I think even, even before, you're the only one who has done it, right, Martin? Yeah, that's right. Right. So. It's a, it's a great privilege for us to, to have Martin with us today. Besides being an outdoor person, Martin is also a business person. 
Martin has um, worked, oh, he worked in corporate America for several years, and especially in Silicon Valley, in especially in technology. But he also has been a public servant. Uh, during the years, Earth has the managing director for the Utah Office of Economic Development for Governor Hasman. Today, Martin is a mentor and a social entrepreneur, helping many small businesses to start and grow. Um, and he is a member of the in creating the right mindset when fa facing difficulties and hard times. He has many experiences doing this as an outdoor man, but also has a business owner and a businessman and an entrepreneur. Um, this topic is really important because I think in the with the current crisis, many of us are facing many challenges where we need to use our resilience and we need to be ready to face difficulties and overcome those difficulties. And I think Martin is one of the best person who can share with us his experiences and also his knowledge. Like I said, not only has an out outdoor person, but also has a business person, an entrepreneur, and as a social um, entrepreneur. So it's my pleasure for me to introduce Martin today and to to be able to join him in this webinar for all the Philippines. Martin, thank you so much for being with us and thank you for taking your time to share your knowledge. Oh, it's my pleasure, Robert. I'm really excited to be with everybody today. Thank you so much for having me and I'm so sorry that we can't be together in person. I think um, under, uh, being able to shake your hands and be close uh, would have made this a little uh, more fun. Um, and, but maybe uh, we'll do that sometime in the future. Um, I wanted to uh, talk today about uh, a continuation of the seminars that you've already had. You had Rich Christensen talk about entrepreneurship. He's one of the great entrepreneurs. He started 45 different companies and one after the other and has kept going. Uh, I have a lot of respect to him, he's a good friend. You've also had Jim Ritchie talk about the principles of leadership and he's a great leader in his own right. <clears throat> and today, as I thought about how to bring this all together in given the virus and uh, the, the challenging times we're in right now, I thought that I would talk about the psychology of achievement and how that relates to taking on these challenges and enduring and all of that. And so I welcome any um, questions that come out during our discussion on the Q&A, but know that as soon as I'm done, uh, we'll have an open discussion and then uh, we'll um, have some other opportunities to hear from my good friend, Michael, talk a little bit about some tools that may help you be successful right now. And then we'll have another uh, Q&A at the end. So that's kind of the plan on how this will come together. Does that sound good? So let me, uh, let me share my screen if I can. Um, can you all see that? Okay, all right. So this idea of the psychology of achievement came about when I started to understand that I was doing things differently than a lot of the other people on some of the expeditions I went on. In fact, I learned that some of them were dropping out. These were guys that were a whole lot stronger than I was. So as I started to think about all these things, I decided to put this together in some of my core principles. 
So when you think about climbing a mountain and entrepreneurship is definitely a tough mountain to climb, what do you think are some of the most important things that you can take with me? Um, go ahead and hit the, the um, I can't see the, the screen, but I can see the Q&A. So go ahead and just put it on the Q&A and put down some of the things you think are the most important thing if you were to go climb uh, a giant mountain. Any ideas? A rope, okay, I see rope. Rope is really good. You can see I've got a rope there for safety. I see lots of gear and a harness. So I'm wearing a harness. Uh, uh, some tools, absolutely. An ice axe is sticking out of my backpack. Um, I've got a helmet on. But none of these things yet are the most important. Any other ideas? Uh, oh, courage and strength. I love that one. And determination and commitment and willpower and sanity. Yeah, my wife doesn't think I've got a lot of sanity when I do some of this. I'd love to talk a little more about the determination and courage. Um, uh, physically and mentally fit, perseverance, food. Actually, you know, when you get up so high in the mountains, your body doesn't even digest food anymore. It just starts consuming muscle. So food is definitely not one of them, but stamina and all of that come together. And they're all part of this psychology of achievement. We have to though, this idea of attitude, that's really where I wanna go. Thank you, Raquel. This idea <clears throat> that we are going to embrace the unknown, to take on this adventure and to really um, say, okay, I'm gonna, I don't know how this is gonna play out. It's very much like entrepreneurship. We decide to start a business and then there are lots of challenges that we don't even know what we're gonna face. But all of this comes together in this adventure driven mindset. And it is the single most uh, important factor that we can take with us. Now, why can't I move the slides? Let's see, there we go. So we all wanna achieve our summit. And one of the things I wanna emphasize is that in order for us to get there, it's a journey. It's not something that happens overnight. It's not building a business is also the same thing. It's not something we can do right away. All of this takes time and there's a process. And that process is important for us to uh, follow if we're truly going to be uh, successful in achieving our goals and our business objectives. So I'd like to start off by going through some of these characteristics that I've learned that have enabled me to be successful on all these big challenges I've had. Now, I've never had to face a big virus and we're all in this uh, for the first time. But I do know that these principles are really going to help each of you. And we'll send this slide out to the whole group uh, as part of this, but you can uh, uh, go through this with me. The first one is that we have to proactively change. And this idea of continually stepping forward outside of our comfort zone and moving forward has been a big challenge for many, many people. If you think about it, when we are fearful, we want to hold on to the past, to the identity of who we are and what we've done in the past that's made us successful. And that's a hard habit to break. But this whole idea of proactively change says, in order for us to succeed, climbing our next summit or facing our next challenge is we need a new recipe for success. And that means we have to change how we approach the problem or the challenge. And we have to think differently than we have before. And that's very hard for a lot of people to embrace. So that's number one. Number two 
is this idea of self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is a big word, but it means the belief that I can do it. And self-efficacy comes from past experience, but it's the confidence that we carry forward as we take on a new challenge. I know that I can go sail around the world partly because of my sailing experience, or I can go climb a big mountain. But as we bring that experience to bear in entrepreneurship, it's like, hey, I know I can sell to a customer. So when I go in to meet with a customer, I just know I can close this deal. And it both happens, it's both a belief and an appreciation for what's happened in the past. Does that make sense? Number three, self-determination. What self-determination means is that if I'm not even told how to do it, I can figure out a path to achieve my summit. I'll, I'll find a way and I'll keep trying until I figure it out. Sometimes when people hit an obstacle or a big challenge, they then hunker down and they don't try new things or uh, constantly keep trying. And so self-determination is crucial if we're gonna get there. The next key to success is resilience. We all face failure and setbacks and there are lots of areas where we're not good at yet and we have to constantly try and learn by failure and trial and uh, resilience is the ability to recover from setbacks. It's the idea of picking ourselves up from and getting back on course and making the decisions that we need to do to get uh, on, on course and navigating again. The fifth one is knowing your why. <clears throat> a lot of times when it gets really, really hard, we doubt and question why are we putting ourselves through this? As we're struggling to get our business going, it seems so hard because we don't know where our next paycheck may be coming from. We have to remember our why. I remember climbing Everest and not uh, always wanting to be there. It was so hard. And I had to go back and remember that if I succeeded, I'd be able to be talking with you all today. And that really was my why. I wanted to be able to inspire others to achieve their goals in life. Number six is delayed gratification. This idea that we need to resist the life's distractions. Social media is a big distraction. Gaming is a big distraction. Uh, family can be distractions. All the things that get in our way of being focused on building our business and deferring a short-term reward for a bigger long-term reward. All of that goes into what self-determination or self, uh, delayed gratification really means. The next one is this idea of grit. They've studied all of the famous uh, Olympians and they've studied all the great operas or uh, uh, musicians and all of these amazing people. And they realized that it wasn't intellectual differences. They were all pretty smart, but not super smart. What made them achieve the best uh, that they could be and reach their potential was this idea of grit. Sustaining over time, day in and day out, the practice regime that they needed to be an Olympian or the principles of the business and constantly applying them again and again, over and over. And that's a lot hard for people to do um, because we all uh, don't always stay focused on the things that we need to. And then finally, this idea of being deliberate. And being deliberate is about identifying weak areas and then laying out a very specific plan to strengthen our weak areas or our weaknesses 
and also focusing on our strengths and turning our strengths uh, into strategic advantages so that we can achieve our stretch goals or we can achieve our business goals in life. Those are the eight characteristics that have really differentiated a lot of people and how they become truly successful. So that's all part of the psychology that we need to incorporate if we're going to be a business success in spite of all the challenges we're facing right now. So let me just throw this out really quick. If you have any questions about this page or what's on this page, post a question real quick and I'll try to answer it and before I go on and tell you some stories about how these principles all played out in my life and in my adventures. Any questions? Okay, I'll go on. I'm not seeing any questions posted. Am I, am I doing it right? Ah, okay. Wait, Martin. Yeah, I'm, I'm also checking the Q&A box. Okay. Uh, Okay. All right, let me keep going. Do you guys recognize this guy? His name was Nephi. And obviously, the, a lot of the Book of Mormon stories of uh, bring him up. Um, but he's a great example of some of these key characteristics. And I thought I'd go back and and highlight these in the Book of Mormon. We won't read each of these, but I'll, I'll refer to them. And they're there if you want to look them up. Nephi says to the Lord in uh, 3.7, he says, I will go and do the things which the Lord commands. Even though I don't know what it is, I know the Lord will empower me to get there and get it done. That's the definition of self-efficacy, this core belief that he can do it. Later on in Nephi 17 and 18, he talks about having to build a ship and never having done it before. The Lord commands him to go build this ship and Nephi realizes that he doesn't even have the tools to build the ship and that he has to first go figure out how to get the tools made, and then he can start building the ship. That is what self-determination is all about, this idea that you'll figure out how to make it happen. And then finally, in the uh, chapter 16, um, it really talks about what happens when his family um, breaks their bow, Nephi breaks his bow. They're starving because they haven't eaten. They're really struggling as a family. Laman and Lemuel start whining and complaining. Um, even Lehi starts to doubt and question what's going on and how is he gonna make this all work. But Nephi doesn't sit around and complain. He gets and figures out okay, I'm going to figure out how to make a bow out of wood, and I'm going to go then find a way to feed my family, which he does. And so all of that comes together in a way that is a great example of resilience. And I love Nephi because self-efficacy, self-determination, and resilience all play out in him as a great leader. When I went and saw Everest, I went on a business trip to India and I flew up to Nepal and I chartered a plane and I flew around the mountain and I saw this mountain rising up above the clouds and I couldn't believe how big it was. It was beyond me. There was no way I could ever even think about climbing that thing. It was just so gigantic. But a couple years after that, I started to think about it again. And I was like, I wonder what it would take 
for me to start climbing that mountain? What would I have to do and who would I have to become? And so I put myself in the picture. I stepped into my vision and I made it my Everest. And this idea that I could one day climb Everest. So I started to train in the mountains and build the skill set that I needed to be able to be successful. And when I got to Everest, I had to learn a lot of physical skills. And then I went and practiced on Denali, the tallest mountain in North America. And I went to try to climb this mountain, which was 20,000 feet. I don't know how many meters that is or off the top of my head. Maybe somebody can take 20,000 divided by 3.14. But Denali is the tallest mountain in North America. And it's very close to the Arctic Circle, meaning it's very cold. It's actually colder than Everest. And my buddy and I decided we would fly in and land on this glacier you see in the middle and begin to climb this mountain. And we had to pull a big uh, 25 kilo pack. Uh, Denali is over 6,100 meters, um, but we had to carry this heavy load on our backs. And then we had to haul this sled up to the halfway point on the mountain. And each day we'd climb and then we'd have to stop for the night and build this wind wall of these ice blocks. And you can see that I'm on the right in the red and these other climbers on our, on our summit team, one guy's like, hey, look at me, I'm really strong. And the other guys are all having a good, a good time thinking about how do they get there. But my buddy Steve is in the big yellow boots in the middle, and he becomes important later on. As we got further up the mountain, you can see how cold it was. It was quite a challenge for a lot of people. And so as these challenges started to come together, people started to drop out of the expedition. By the time we got to 17,000 feet, or high camp, everybody but my climbing partner, Steve, had already dropped out of the expedition. These were guys that were, were a lot stronger than I was, but they either lost their why and forgot why they were there, or they tried to, to muscle their way through and couldn't quite cope with all of the uncertainty and the cold and the storm and the lousy food. But we got to Everest, to this camp, and Steve, my partner, my climbing partner, all of a sudden got altitude sick. And so he started to throw up and, and be terribly sick. And at the same time, this giant storm came in. And the storm went on for days. And we were stuck in this tent for six days and we only went outside to shovel the snow off the tent twice a day. Finally, we made it to the summit on day seven. But that lesson of climbing and being stuck for so long, um, uh, we had been on the mountain for 21 days by this point. And finally we made it. But three months later, after this picture was taken, my friend Steve died of a brain aneurysm and a struggle that may have come from being on the mountain together. So I decided in honor of him to go on and climb Everest. And so I then went back to Kathmandu and then started to climb uh, along with the other Sherpas carrying our loads. And, and you can see from this picture just how heavy these loads are, these Sherpas carry. Massive loads. That's probably, oh, 60 kilos, maybe uh, 55, 60 kilos. But even the guy in the upper corner has got five yaks. He's still carrying a massive load to go up the mountain. And I learned it never gets easier. 
This is my wife, Kim, with just another mountain, seeing how big these mountains are, even before we get to Everest. And then I saw all the, the tombstones from everybody who died along the way, and I had to really question whether I was making a big risk and whether I was going to be in trouble. And then finally, <clears throat> we get to Everest Space Camp. And Everest Space Camp is a good place to hang out, but you wouldn't want to live there for too long. It's uh, on this glacier and it's a challenge, but it's, it's one more challenge along the way to climbing Everest. The next big obstacle is getting through the Kumbu Icefall. These massive blocks of ice that break up from the glacier up above. And we had to work our way through these ice blocks. And you can see there I am in the green. And we had to do it at night when the uh, ice is a little more stable. So all we had was this headlamp and we're trying to work our way through the ice. Our next big challenge were the crevasses. These big challenging blocks of ice or holes in the ice that we had to cross with these ladders. And some of the ladders went up and down and some of them went <clears throat> across, but they were all big challenges for us to deal with. The next ladder here is five ladders um, lashed together and looking down over this giant crevasse to get across. And there's my climbing partner on the Everest and he's crossing and you can see as he steps on his right foot how the whole ladder twists and shakes. And uh, we still had to get across this thing. The next challenge was getting up to camp two and working our way through the hot sun. And then on to camp at um, camp two. And you're so tired out, you can't believe that you can get any further up the mountain. And finally you look up and you say, how am I gonna get up to the top when you can't even see the summit? And you have to keep going and working your way up through the next challenge, which is this Lhotse face. And I'm gonna try to zoom in right here. I don't know if you can see right in here, but this is all these climbers slowly working their way up and down the Lhotse face. And we had to go up and down to build up the red blood cells to make it uh, up on the mountain. And you can see me on the climb. And you can see in the upper corner just how steep this face is as we go up and down the mountain. We get up to camp three and the storm had come in and it was a complete whiteout with uh, uh, 50 kilometer, I'm uh, sorry, 110 kilometer uh, winds. <clears throat> and we had to go all the way back down to the bottom and start all over again. And so Everest was, I felt so defeated at that point. I was so discouraged. I didn't think I could go back up the mountain, but we had to basically begin our whole journey again. And I called my wife on the phone and I said, honey, I just don't think I can go any further. And so I knew, <clears throat> Uh, that I was for thinking I was done, but she said, Martin, why don't you just relax tonight, um, w watch a movie, and uh, not worry about the mountain. And so I watched Finding Nemo on my iPad, and I had an opportunity to refresh and rebuild myself and recover both physically and emotionally. And I learned that this is important that we need to do every day when we're under so much stress as entrepreneurs to really build ourselves up um, personally, uh, whatever way works for us. And then I climbed back up to camp three and then we went up higher now to camp four. And you look up and you start to see the real technical part of the climb. This idea of 
having to get from camp four up to the summit is a whole series of objectives. And each of those objectives breaks down into rope lengths. And each of those rope lengths break down into steps. And each of those steps break down into breaths because you have to breathe maybe five or 10 times between each step as you work your way up the mountain. And there I am, you can see I'm wearing my oxygen mask and we're heading up towards the south summit, slowly making our way up the mountain. That's how cold it is on Everest. And you can see I'm working my way along the ridge line to then start working up what's called the Hillary Step. And I go up the mountain and we had to work with the team as a team to know which rope to uh, um, use as a safety line. And then you can see how close I am. You can see the prayer flags at the summit, but I'm so hunched over because it's so hard to take every step. I'm barely making it one step at a time. And it was so painful that I had to keep going and get there. And then finally, we make it to the summit and celebrate. I took out a sign and I told my family I love them. I honored my friend Steve, who died and was my partner taking him to the summit with me. And I took out a flag and I planted it, a university flag on the summit of Everest because I wanted all the students to get all the education that they could in life because it'll take them anywhere they want to go. And so I climbed, looked out over the world from the top of the world and I had this great sense of accomplishment. This idea that I had figured out how to get there. And so my identity of who I was and what I could accomplish actually changed. I realized that if I could climb Everest, maybe there were more things that I could do. And so I set out to take on other challenges. I went to Antarctica and I climbed the seven summits. And I, when I got to Antarctica, I looked out over the Antarctic plateau and I realized I had climbed all the tallest mountains on each continent and that I really had a chance to just enjoy that moment and uh, appreciate what I had accomplished. But I didn't want to lose my momentum. I wanted to keep building and, and build on what I had done. And so I set out to cross-country ski to the South Pole. And for days on end, we crossed the Antarctica and uh, dragged the, um, let's see, uh, about an 80 kilo sled behind us as we went across the across the ice. I also had a family back home and I had to balance my love of adventure for my family. And our daughter Lily is disabled. She's in a handicapped wheelchair. And so we decided that we would try to sail and learn to sail as a family. And so we practiced where it was really calm and then we set out to go through the South Pacific and to go through the Panama Canal and sail all the way to Australia. And so we set out to cross and we had a different kind of a team. Uh, and I had to accommodate the team that I had and rethink about how to keep everybody happy and cross the oceans. We got to see some beautiful places in the South Pacific. We had a beautiful time and sometimes, but we also had a lot of uncertainty. Here I am di um, diving with sharks and not knowing whether they would attack and the dealing with the storms and the, all the things that go wrong on a boat were constant drain and something I had to constantly face and, and uh, uh, be challenged by. We got to Fiji and this is what a school bus looks like on the island of Fiji. We played with the underwater animal life and really enjoyed that. 
And here's a whale, a humpback whale breaching right next to my wife, Kim, as she faced her fears and was able to learn a lot by putting herself out there and overcoming uh, the challenge. We finally made it to Australia. And then I decided to go on without Lily and we crossed the Indian Ocean. And these are Komodo dragons. And I swam with whale sharks and challenged myself to make it all the way around the world. And having completed that circumnavigation, I thought, wow, there's a few more oceans I need to cross. So I sailed down to Antarctica and uh, I got a chance to do it on an old sailing ship. And from there I practiced uh, being what it was like to be a sailor in old days. And we got to see the glaciers and um, look at this, the animal life down there. And from there I decided to sail across the North Pacific on this sailboat. And this challenge was one of the most difficult things I had, I had ever done. It was harder than Everest. We started in China and we <clears throat> sailed nonstop from China to Seattle, um, 10,000 kilometers. And you can see the ocean was really rough. I'm there with a smile on my face at the, at the helm and I'm getting hit from the side with waves and from behind with giant waves. These are 10 meter high waves. They're more like 12 meter high waves that are hitting us uh, and making us uh, like we're in a washing machine. If you look at my face, you can see that I'm just struggling. I'm worn out, I'm not sleeping. I was constantly wet and cold, shivering all the time from being so cold, but no matter what the storms were, we had to keep going. On one of the other race boats, one of the girls or women was swept overboard and drowned. And we had to keep going in spite of all of that to happen. You can see how big this giant wave is that's coming up behind us. And it was scary, but we looked at it not as a threat, but as an opportunity. And so often when we see challenges, we think of them as bad, but sometimes we can turn these challenges into an opportunity that'll help propel us forward. And if you look at this next picture, you can see that wave pushed us um, down the wave <clears throat> really fast. And so all of a sudden, what we thought was a problem turned into be an advantage for us and help us go faster. Finally, as a team, we came together and we were able to make it across the, across the land. And so as you think about your road ahead, I want you to think about three things. Number one, that you guys can think about your Everest and that's building your business. It's how you can go about that and that it is a, as big as Everest. Number two, remember the things and the keys to achievement. Number three, remember that sometimes it's like navigating through the fog and you have to just go forward even though you can't see the future and you're not sure how it's gonna play out. And to remember that sometimes the, the sun will peak out and you'll see a little further. It may not be a bright sunny day, but you're step by step, you will find a way and you will keep moving forward. Number two, sometimes people only see the challenges and the obstacles in their way. And they don't realize that they can find a way to weave through the challenges and navigate and make decisions. And if we keep making decisions and keep course correcting as we go forward, we will be successful in being able to move our company forward and, and become successful. And then finally, to always remember that it's not a straight line to the summit. It's ups and downs and, and, and successes and failures and discouragement 
and that it's never ending series of challenges that we have to continually overcome as we embrace the challenge of entrepreneurship. Because an entrepreneur values the risk because we, or we take on the risk because we see the opportunity and the upside and we value that more than just staying in our status quo. So with that, I hope that you'll know that mountains have taught me that I can achieve more than I ever thought possible. I never believed that I had it in me to climb Everest or all these other mountains. And the oceans and crossing all these oceans taught me that I can navigate my way through life and that I can make decisions. They're not all going to be right. My job is to make and constantly make decisions. And if I do, then I can course correct when I need to because I'll make another decision and optimize it as I go. And that's the, the true sign of a successful business leader that they recognize when they've made a wrong decision quickly and that we're resilient enough to get back on course and get the company going in the right direction in spite of all the changing circumstances. I know that we're in a really tough environment. I know that it's hard. We've lost all these customers and nobody's buying. And so we're constantly able to rethink how do we go forward. So I hope that each of us can, um, can think about <clears throat> how we can dig deep and how we can embrace the Lord's help to enable us to achieve our goals in life. And I know each one of us has it in us to be able to achieve those goals. So with that, let me ask if there are any questions about some of my challenges and what I had to face and how that applies to entrepreneurship. Martin, we do have uh, some questions already. So, okay. Yeah, I can read some of them to you now. Yep. Uh, one says, how do you overcome the idea that you are too old to begin climbing your summit? from Ronalyn Rueta? Ah, good question. Um, it goes back to that adventure mindset. I'm never gonna be too old to embrace an adventure. I love adventure. Adventure is very different than entertainment. Entertainment over here is what a lot of people in the world look for. They want to stay in their status quo, they want to be entertained and have fun and laugh and all of that. But entertainment doesn't teach you the things that adventure teaches you. Adventure teaches you courage and decision making and problem solving and all the things that go with entrepreneurship. And so we have to remember that all of this is more valuable and helps us grow and reach our potential and to sometimes enjoy entertainment, but not make it too much of life. And so I look and hope I can be like President Nelson, who at 95 is still having an adventure and he's leading out and enabling others to achieve their potential in life. So great question, thanks. Oh, here's another one, uh, Martin, uh, from uh, Dude Suico. Uh, his question is, how do you keep going when you can see if you're going to succeed or not yeah. i have my effort set already but sometimes when the going gets hard it becomes very difficult to keep the faith and keep going that is so true i i really agree it is hard when you can't see it day to day and you're in the ups and downs of business when i climbed everest it took me 51 days for 48 of those 51 days, I never saw the summit. I had to remember my why. Why was I putting myself through all this suffering and to challenge to get there? And all of that comes from having a good sense of knowing why we're doing something. And then obviously learning that we can dig deep in within ourselves, that we have more reserves of strength 
than we sometimes give ourselves credit for? But that's a great question. And it's not always easy to remind ourselves how to, to keep that faith that we can get it done. Well, I think there's a good follow-up question uh, to that one when you mentioned about remembering the why. Richard Inigo asked, so what's your, what's your big why? What's your, your why in doing the seven summits and the seven seas? Yeah, so honestly, it's truly because I wanted to be an inspirational leader to try to help other people conquer their world and to enable them to achieve their potential. You know, we all have a, a goal of achievement of either who we want to become or who, what we want to achieve. And that is very fulfilling. And even the idea of family and fulfilling opportunities. And there are two key elements or foundational pillars to achieving that summit. On the one hand over here is this idea of having enough energy and the ability to go after our goals because we have so much energy. A lot of people don't in life because they don't approach it with enough energy to achieve their summit. And the other one over here is this adventure mindset and this willingness to do the hard things and to step out of our comfort zone. If we're not willing to do that and to really change our identity and become the person capable of fulfilling their summit, we will never reach beyond what most people achieve. And so this whole summit journey of getting and becoming and constantly exercising our faith that we can pull it together, even as though sometimes we fail, is this process that we do over and over again to achieve that. And that's just such a key lesson to uh, overcome the doubts and the fears that get in our way of progression. You, you want to do one more question, uh, Martin, before you proceed? No worries, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, one, one really good question. Uh, do you consider your wife? Uh, played a great role for you to continuously climb your son. Uh, like you know, my up. wife is right here. And uh, hop in, hon. <laughs> my wife, without her, I would not be uh, successful in any way, shape, or form. I'm so grateful that we have these uh, adventures together. I had the idea the other night of sleeping in a snow cave and digging a cave in the snow on the side of a mountain. And my wife came with me and spent the night in a snow cave. So she has fun. Anything you want to add? No, I'm good. <laughs> so I'm very grateful that she's here by my side and all the things I've been able to do. So good question. Can I just say one thing? I think that um, the question about finding your why and why did Martin climb those, climb those. And a lot of times, like what, how he answered was, um, let me scoot over. Um, he answered, um, how did you answer with, the, with your why? What because of inspiring others or helping to inspire, others. And he truly does. That is the reason why he, he does what he does is because he wants to get out there and he, he wants to encourage people to um, find their why and to find their adventure in their life. And that adventure can be a company or trying to start a, a new venture. And, you know, it, times are tough right now and they're, they're even tough for us. We, we have a business right now and we, we can't get our product in because of the virus. So we understand that, but you have to kind of look past that and see that there's a future there and that your father in heaven loves you and he wants you to succeed. And you just kind of have the faith and, and continue to remember why you have that why and why you have that desire to want to succeed. So thanks. Hon. You're welcome. You know, I, I do want to say that I, I know what it's like to be an entrepreneur. And I know how hard it is to be uh, successful in this environment. We have a company that brings product in from China and we sell it to uh, internet service providers here. And we haven't received any product since January. And I have nine people or 11 people in the business and I pay their salaries and we have nothing to sell, okay? So not only are the customers not buying, 
we don't even have any more product to, 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 to sell. And so it's really hard. And the expenses and all the challenges are there. And I just want you to know it's not easy. And I, I, my heart goes out to all of you as entrepreneurs and how challenging it is. And so we thought that maybe we would share with you some of the tools that as we're all working from home that you can use to reach customers in new and different ways, even if you're um, quarantined at home. And so I'd like to turn it over to my friend, Michael Quintera, and he can talk a little bit about, uh, give you an overview of some of these resources that you can use even in this environment where it's so tough to do business. Michael? Okay, thank you, Martin. And thank you uh, to uh, uh, Robert and James and Lloyd for this invitation and for you all that right now are, are uh, hiding, uh, listen me. <laughs> uh, here in Colombia, we doesn't speak in English, but I will do my best so you can understand the things uh, that actually I am using for my business and some customers so they can get incomes uh, even working in their homes. So I, I would like to share my screen. Uh, can you all, can you all can see? Okay. Very good. So the title of this uh, small workshop of marketing digital uh, in quarantine times, okay? So that's the name that I <laughs> wrote for you all. Uh, okay, let's start with a, a small example of Nike. This is a big brand and their story is that in this year they are selling 7% more than the last year. So the question here is what am I missing? Because Nike have almost uh, the, their, their stores closed. <laughs> so how they, they are selling more than the last year. So the answer is that they are using online, online store e-commerce. So I, I wanna share with you some platforms that you can see and learn and use so you can sell your products and offer your service. Also, for example, in Facebook, uh, I hope you can have a profile. And if you look at this, if you click here, you, uh, you will find this option called Marketplace here. So in this marketplace, the people can upload the product free and the people can watch the pictures, the prices and the description of your product and they can contact through Messenger and make business with you. So we, we need to use the service, uh, delivery service, so we can uh, make the deliveries, okay? But this platform is helping a lot of entrepreneurs that I know that actually they sell products and they are having incomes constantly. Second, there is a platform called Eggwit uh, that you can find on internet. There is a easy way of creating a online store by only $15, $15, one five, one five. that's right, $1, $5. Yes. And, and, and then you can upload your products there and the people can buy you uh, using your online store, okay? I want you to, to look for more platforms in your country because here in Colombia, we have a lot and they are for free. Uh, so we can take the pictures, post it, and the people can buy them, buy, uh, buy it us, okay? For example, here we have Mercado Libre, and I hope uh, James can help me to maybe uh, associate this platform uh, for the group later. Uh, we talked about this yesterday, so you can help me to teach them uh, what kind of platform it is. 
So the people are selling too much for this platform called Mercado Libre, okay? Here in, in Colombia and in, in all those countries. So try to see this kind of platform so you can show your products. Now I wanna show you the consumer path in five concepts. And, and I want you to think about what can you do in this moment from your home so you can build your business in this moment. For example, the first principle is the people needs to know your product, your brand. So use the social media to create videos, to upload pictures so the people can know you. I'm very sure that maybe you were so focused who's selling uh, people to people, but maybe you didn't use Facebook or Instagram before. So it's a good time to take your phone and make a video and say, I am Market360. And we do all this. We are offering these products or these solutions so that people can know you. Okay, that's very important and you can do it uh, from your home. Second, we need the people try and test your product. So here is really important that you can associate with some uh, business uh, that makes delivery so the people can pay you and get the product. That's very important. Here in Colombia, we have a, a lot of business that they are allowing uh, to take the products and uh, bring them to the customers. Point number three. Uh, when the people know your brand and taste your product, and if they love your product, what I need you to do right now is go to the old customers or to those people who taste your product or service and ask for recommendation. That's very important. There are people that are willing to recommend, to recommend your product and brand with others through social media. Okay, and number five, you can get uh, more sales. Okay, so I need you to focus in creating a fan page on Facebook, that's free, uh, having a, a profile on Instagram also, and get up active there. So you need, all what you need is internet and a cell phone, okay? Now, I wanna introduce a one rule that I'm sure that all of you know, okay? And I love this rule because it, uh, uh, we can apply it really good today. Sell what the market is buying. Why I am presenting you this rule? Because maybe your uh, business is closed and you don't have any possibilities to sell, okay? And, and I understand that. But I understand that maybe uh, there is another part that actually they can still sell in and it's okay. But if you are in the first part, I want you to think about what kind of products or service uh, can I sell right now, okay? And I want you to focus on this role so you always are generating incomes daily. That's actually, it is a, a, another goal of rule. Okay, so think about this. What is the market buying right now? And let's the um, preparation that you can do this. Uh, next, I want you to think about this phrase. People are at home uh, spending their time in social media. How can we reach them? This is a big opportunity to, to reach these people that actually are in their homes and they are spending a lot of time with a cell phone looking Facebook, Instagram, YouTube to create a brand awareness so the people can know you. The answer for this is that we need to uh, make digital prospecting. That's the new way that we can generate new customers. And, and I want you to think about this and I wanna show you some examples about one business uh, that I know uh, and how they are prospecting digitally.
For example, look at this business. They, they sell food, okay? With the cell phone, they record a video about their product, okay? And they use Facebook ads to reach more people in the city and look at these results. This business before the quarantine, before the virus, they were selling too much, too much uh, food daily. But when they applied Facebook ads or marketing, uh, digital marketing in their business, they start selling 200 uh, products daily. So the, the, their, their business grows really good. But right now, what they are say, uh, doing is making the product, making the product in their home and sending uh, through delivery uh, business, okay? So I want you to think about the great opportunities that Facebook Ads has, uh, has for your business. And my recommendation for you is go to Facebook Blueprint. You have a, a good time and, and you can uh, get trained using this platform platform look at this this platform teach you about how to create ads how to make a, a fan page on facebook how to uh, make uh, make posts uh, posting or post how to uh, make announce on instagram and on facebook uh, here you are gonna learn all what you need to incorporate and a strategy the digital strategy for your business in times of quarantine, okay? Thank you, Michael. Michael and I met when I was coming back from Antarctica and he was a missionary in Argentina. And the mission president told me that this is a, a young man who has a great potential, but he's going back to his city with very little opportunity and nobody will hire him because there are no jobs. And so we ended up creating an opportunity for Michael to go to the ACE Academy in Mexico City and it changed his life. And he learned the 25 rules of thumb and principles of business and he overcame the challenges. He had some health issues he had to work through and overcome. He had to have back surgery. How many times, Michael? Five. Five back surgeries. And he struggled and he wanted to get married, but he didn't know how he could take care of his family. From there, he finally got married and his first business didn't do so good. And he doubted himself and he didn't think he had the strength to uh, f bring home the money to feed his family. And we encouraged him to keep trying. And he started a company called Market 360 and then Lavalo and both have been successful. And he's grown his business and he's now a leader in the church and he's uh, able to uh, train and does a number of conferences for entrepreneurs in South uh, Latin America and trains them on how to do digital marketing. So it's been wonderful to see him climb his summit. And we have time and time again and to put the same principles of what we were talking about of self-efficacy, belief in yourself, even when it's really hard and you doubt. Self-determination finding a way and just keep trying until you find a way and then resilience and when his business failed he realized he had to start over and he built on his strength was that Michael learned on his mission how to sell and so his ability to relate to people and engage customers and get them to buy his product and position a company that can add value to enable their business success is how he's built his last business. And I'm proud to call him my friend. So with that, are there like any add, questions? Uh, Martin, yeah. I would like to add that Michael is a chapter leader of the Academy in Cali, Colombia. Is one of the first chapter leaders in, in that city when we went last year and created the first chapters in Cali and he's been helping many people 
in the community, in the church, in with their businesses. So I, I think that's another great thing that Michael is doing in helping people through the, his chapter participation as a chapter leader, as a chapter, um, uh, yeah, as a chapter leader in Cali. Very good. Thank you, Michael. One Thank of the things. <laughs> one of the things that sometimes we forget when we're all in our own little city is that we as ACE alumni and as ACE chapter members, we are all one big family and you all are connected to that family. And I will do anything I can do to help you be successful. I would get on a plane in spite of coronavirus and come sit with you and help you with your business. Robert would do the same thing and so would Michael. And so this whole team is a global team that is all over the world, but you all are part of that. And anything we can do but I, uh, for you, please let us know. And by the same token, we draw on your strength and your success. And I've loved getting to know James. He and I went climbing uh, when he was here in Utah and we, we took him outside of his comfort zone. And he's like, I don't do climbing, I'm a business guy. And I'm like, come with me, James, let's go try this. And he was up there hanging off uh, the rock wall. In fact, I'll go try to find a photo of that really fast and share it with you. And you can see James stepping outside of his comfort zone and realizing that and being part of this team that we are together. And so I'm grateful for this time we've had together. And I'll turn it back over to James, unless there are questions you want to talk to either Michael or ask Michael or, or myself. Thank you. Thank you so much, Martin and Michael. Yeah, we do have a few questions, if it's okay. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah, we have some for Michael. We have some for, for Martin. Um, here's one, Martin. Uh, one says, uh, on delayed gratification, what, what, what are some of the things that you had to deprive yourself to stay focused and reach your goal? Yeah. So the first thing, it took me 11 years to climb the seven summits and sail the seven seas. And I had to have a job for the mountaineering parts, but to do the sailing part, I had to leave my job for three years and sail around the world. So this idea of recognizing that I couldn't be a business success, I couldn't be a CEO during that time of my life was hard because I gained a lot of satisfaction out of running companies and doing those sorts of things. But that was tough. By the same token, I get seasick really easy. I have always struggled with being seasick. And I don't know how many of you guys have been seasick, but it's miserable. And there I am out on the ocean, and all I want to do is throw up, and I've thrown up in every ocean of the world, okay? Think about that, guys. Not many people can claim that, okay? But to do that seven... That must be a world record, let me tell you. That's right. That's right. It's miserable being seasick. I hate it. And unlike when you're on a mountain, even when it gets cold and stormy, you can usually put up a tent and wait out the storm. But on a sailboat, no matter how seasick you are, and then when there's a storm, you have to be out on deck and trimming the sails and making the boat go. There's no place to hide. And that's why it's so hard because you're cold and miserable and I wasn't sleeping and I was seasick and throwing up and I have to keep working. And we would be on deck for four hours and then we'd try to be off watch for four hours, on watch for four hours, round the clock, nonstop for a month. And that was really, really hard. Thank you, thank you. Well, we have one question for, for Michael, then I'm gonna go back to you, Martin, again. Michael, they have this really, <laughs> this is a good question. Will you continue to teach us uh, digital marketing? So they were saying, I know that we talked about this uh, yesterday, but uh, uh, it seems like they would like to have a, a separate session with you. So what do you think, Michael? <laughs> yeah, I will be very happy to uh, meet with you all again and 
can uh, guide you like step by step so you can make your own campaign on Facebook, Instagram and can uh, get more sales right now. Uh, I'm really willing to do that. So let's uh, figure out the date and the hour and I will be prepared. There you go. Thank you so much, Michael. And uh, we'll definitely uh, send you a message and we'll make this happen. We'll make okay. this happen for sure. Uh, another webinar with you and we're so grateful that Martin introduced you to all of us and uh, I know that everybody's inspired everybody's thinking of great ways to uh, make wonderful use of our time during quarantine maybe even tap uh, another business opportunity doing this so you're the man thank you <laughs> <laughs> welcome um, Ma Martin here's a here's a great question will you recommend the idea of start before you're ready as a way to go out of the comfort zone. Absolutely. I, I think there is a, a place that you have to be ready enough, meaning I could not have climbed Everest without having climbed other mountains. I had to become the person capable of climbing Everest but you're never really ready for all the things that are going to confront you. So you rely on your experience. When we went through the Panama Canal, it was this point of em embarking, this, this point where you cut the anchor and the safety rope. You have to go 8,500 miles. It's like a whole lot of kilometers to get to uh, Australia. There's not a marina or a spare parts store or anything in between. And there are reefs and dangers and deserted islands in the dark and all these things that can cause problems. So you're never ready. Um, but you have to trust yourself that you can learn as you go and that you can solve the problems you're going to encounter. And so, yes, absolutely stepping out of your comfort zone is definitely taking those risks, but they're managed risks. There are certain things you'll risk and certain things you don't wanna risk. And at the same time, as you make smart decisions about what to risk, that is all stepping outside your comfort zone. It's a great question, thank you. Wonderful, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna give you one more question and then we will have Michael give their final words of, uh, of uh, closing words, Robert also, and then we'll have Martin also give his closing words, and then we'll have a closing prayer. But here's an interesting question, Martin. Somebody's asking, now that you have climbed all the seven summits and sailed the seven seas, what's next? Is there other summits that you would like to, uh, what's next after uh, that? So my Everest right now is to write a book. And I'm finding it tremendously difficult to sit still and get all my thoughts and stories on paper. I don't know why. I like to be outside and I like to be having adventures. And it's distracting to go climb a mountain or go do something fun in the mountains because it's the only thing we can do to get out of the house. And sitting at my desk is very, very hard to be disciplined, to keep writing every day. And so that's my big Everest, is to be able to get these stories and to, to write them in a way that isn't about what I've done, but it lays out the path on that summit journey for others to follow. And so that's my big challenge right at the moment. Wow, we, we, we will look forward to that, that book, Martin. You know, and you were mentioning our um, wall climbing experience. And I remember that. I remember the exact moments I was holding on to dear life. And I would hear you from the uh, shouting out, say, you know, uh, you can do hard things. You can do hard things, you know. Get out of your comfort zone and never left my mind. Ah, uh, yes. Exactly. So your words when, of it when was that? That was like January, right? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. January. And so... Yeah, your words of inspiration. So we have to put it in the, in, in, in the book and, and, and have many people get inspired because you truly are, truly are inspiring. So we're, we're blessed to have you this morning. Thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, 
my, we'll, we'll give Michael his final words, his closing words. And then uh, we would also like to have our CEO, Robert Hain, give his uh, closing remarks, closing words. And then we'll give Martin his final words. And then we'll have a closing prayer, which will be offered by uh, Randy Pino. And Michael, please. Uh, a lot of questions. They're, they're saying, Michael, can we have one-on-one -on -one sessions with Michael? We'll, 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 we'll bring Michael again on a webinar, okay? So uh, there's a big demand for you now. <laughs> You're now a celebrity. I will have the the my, uh, my final message for you to be when you do these kind of platforms, of course. And I will uh, share with you one uh, phrase that personally has has helped me to focus more and I am very sure that you can uh, get inspiration on these words so to focus on the things that you can change that's uh, that I want to share with you tonight <laughs> and and I hope it can work for you all Thank you, Michael. We hear from Robert. Thank you, James. I I want to take just a few words to thank Martin for his time. Thank you so much, Martin, for that was an excellent presentation. Thank you. I, in the name of, of the Academy and in the name of all the people in the Philippines, I can say thank you uh, for your time. It means a lot to us that you have done this uh, today. Uh, my final message to everybody is I think we need to remember the importance of having faith in these difficult times. Um, the Lord Jesus Christ once says, uh, the things that I have spoken unto you, you that I, that in me, overcome the world. I know that for a fact. They're going to pass. But the most important thing that we need to have during this time is, is faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And with faith, we can overcome everything. And I can guarantee you that the Lord is he knows the end from the beginning. And he knows that we're going to learn very important lessons during this crisis. The question is, are we ready to learn those lessons? And are we going to embrace those lessons so that those lessons will make us different? Um, so always remember that the Lord is always with you, that he is in every step of the way we just need to keep walking. And thank you again, Martin. Thank you again, Michael. And my, my great, great greetings to all the people in the Philippines who are listening to us tonight. Thank you. And thank you, James. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Martin, please. I want to do two things here quickly. Uh, the first is I need to share this photo. <laughs> Can you guys see that? <laughs> I was that's, struck in there. Looks like I was really having a hard time, huh? Yeah, exactly. That's James uh, on the climbing wall uh, outside of his comfort zone. And um, the other thing that I want to share is this idea to one, bet on yourself. I would bet on each of you. I know it's hard. And yet I will bet on you. And if I can um, have you learn to bet on yourself and believe in yourself enough that you can do it. And you have to practice this idea every day of being able to remind yourself that you can do it. Try to find an accountability partner, someone that you can spend just two to four minutes a day with if you need to, or at least once a week. And you guys just talk to each other on the phone and said, 
I laid out my game plan of what I needed to do and I just wanted to be accountable to you that I could do these things and if you get stuck, uh, find somebody in your chapter or somebody who you trust as a mentor and tell them uh, to or ask for advice or to, to do that. And then finally be accountable to the Lord and know that he will guide and direct you and that I just know that I never would have been journeys that I've been on if I didn't have the Lord helping me through it day in and day out when it got hard. He kept me on track and kept me focused, and I know he will be there for you. Team collaboration, and as we listen then to their issues, we can be accountable to each other and then also to the Lord, and that the Lord will, will bless us because he wants us to be successful in spite of the challenges that face us each and every day. And know that my, my heart is with you and uh, rely on my belief in you, if nothing else. And so thank you very much for this time together this evening, or this morning. Martin, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this has been really a wonderful webinar once again, as always. And we've been receiving a lot of comments, how uh, uh, wonderful everybody's feeling right now. And so um, we would like to thank everybody who joined us today. After the prayer, we will start promoting our attendees, as many of our attendees as panelists, so that we can have this, as usual, a, a mini virtual reunion. Uh, so Martin and, and Rich uh, and Robert and Mike can just you know, if you want to just hang around and, and just uh, see the faces of our of our alumni and say hi to them, and that would be that would also be fun. And then uh, we can go back to uh, being home quarantine. <laughs> being home quarantine. All right. So I I don't think Randy's available. We'll have Lloyd. I think give the closing prayer, Lloyd. Uh, thank you. And then after your prayer, we'll uh, see some of our friends who are joined in as much as many that we can promote as panelists. So Lloyd. Please say the closing prayer. Thank you. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful privilege to <clears throat> learn a lot of things from our speaker, especially um, Martin Frey, for sharing his wonderful stories in life. We thank the Father for keeping us safe and be productive this time of crisis we ask thee thy blessings to please protect every one of us that we'll all be safe guided and that um <clears throat> we will always continue to um explore and reach our summit please bless everyone that will be able to share blessings to other people too and all the things we pray in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we will, this, is, this is the fun part too. Uh, we get to see our uh, panelists. Uh, I mean, our attendees. So I know it's going to be limited. Uh, Martin Frey is uh, messaging. Thank you to everyone. Keep climbing. Woohoo! So why are they, Lloyd? Why are they? <laughs> All right, one at a time. <laughs> oh, Jennifer Marsan. Oh, this would be fun to see you, Jennifer. So ho we hope that you can turn on your video so that we, we see your faces, your real faces, and not the photos uh, on your screen. <clears throat> So how, many do we, how many people do we have, James, in total? Uh, our, uh, a while ago, we had 190 uh, on this webinar. And then uh, on Facebook Live, we don't know yet how many we, uh, we have on that. Um, Usually, we got more through Facebook. Uh, live, yeah. Yeah, we, we do get a lot on Facebook Live. Oh, there's Randy. There's President Jaime. Wow, from Bacolod. 
That's great. Great to see you. Ken and uh, Suzette are also with us. Nice one. Sharing their monitor. Atimona is there. Ayo, you have to turn on your video. We want to see you, Ayo. <laughs> Somebody's sharing his screen, huh? Okay. <laughs> oh, you have to turn that off <laughs> so we can see everybody. <clears throat> thank you, thank you. Mm. Jennifer, where are you? Oh, nice. Oh, si Gavino, up or down, can you promote me? Nice one, nice one. So it's Can good I to see the people who are, seeing, you know, who, are uh, who joined us today. Oh, nice. Good to see your faces. Then we'll have a uh, or what's this? Our screenshot. <laughs> Group photo. Group photo. <laughs> President Ed Feliciano, please uh, unmute. So to say hi, how are you? you? Uh, hi. How are you? Thank you, Martin, for your very wonderful uh, presentation. And we are very grateful for that. And Michael, thank you for that uh, wonderful uh, digital prospecting. We love it and we would like to hear uh, more of it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, President Ed Feliciano. Uh, yes, we, we really had a wonderful time with, uh, with our speakers and definitely will bring Michael on a separate webinar and uh, have him give our some tutorials. Oh, baka may tanong kayo. Parang wala kayong masabi, ha? It was wonderful. Okay. Oh, Sherry May. Oh, hi. <laughs> Hi. That was very inspiring, especially right now that our company was hit hard with a crisis and there's a lot of people who were unemployed. We have to put them into a freeze temporarily and we're, um, we're praying as to how soon we can get them back on, on board, but we still can't So because uh, a lot of clients suspended. And because of this, I will be sharing what I've learned today. I'm sure they will also be inspired. Thanks, Jerry. That's great. You have amazing English. I'm really impressed. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's really, really good. I don't know how you manage that. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Wow. So we're back to just having fun looking at each other's faces, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can see our uh, family's faces like 24 hours a day. Now it's, uh, it's a little break. We get to see uh, other people, yeah. you know, just like us, locked in their rooms, locked in their houses. <laughs> Brother fun. James, can we possibly have a recording of this too? Because I've been imagining uh, sharing a part of this with the team. Yes. Um, yes we Mason. badly needed it yes. um, right now. Get in touch with your regional coordinator. We have okay. a, team, a virtual support website. It's a temporary website that is mm -hmm. uh, running right now. And all the video recordings of the previous webinar, including this webinar, uh, give us probably like, I don't know, uh, three hours. Uh, uh, I can post this tonight. And just listen to it over again, share it to as many people so that they too get blessed with us. So we will give you that link for the recording. We can share this even to non member friends, right? You can share it to non member friends. Okay. Thank you. 
and they will they, they will definitely benefit from this. Wow! Who else would like to say hi? Would like to uh, share, give a little comment of what they have. Oh, great! I see. There is voice is here. I want to see you again, my friend. <laughs> Looking forward to the book from from Martin also. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Hear that, Martin? That's a little. No yeah, pressure. Me too. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, I have to do something. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> My husband and I were watching the the picture she shared a while ago. My husband actually loves adventure too, but not as much as you do. Well, he was inspired with what you shared. Okay. <laughs> Ganito nakikita nila ni, ganyan lang. Hindi. For me, I'm so thankful that I've gained so many insights. I've taken notes. What kind of business? What kind of business do you have, Lenny? Oh no! Uh, as of now, I'm the school principal here in our um, community. But I'm thinking because a while ago, when I was uh, listening to your <clears throat> presentation one of my sons said mama i think you should start a business especially in cooking because he likes my buffalo wings <laughs> ah buffalo wings wonderful that's, <laughs> that's great why i'm thinking especially that's why when i was taking notes uh, i've seen of the many challenges that overcome and especially those in attaining and finishing your course to the summit. And I said, what a great strength you had. Thank and you. And I guess all those challenges for us, especially for us, because especially in this school, but now I'm thinking of another, That's as they say, if you want to start a business, do not put your eggs in one basket. I guess you have to have another egg in another nest. Aside from a full-time job. That's right. You know, my wife, Kim, who just had to go to the front door because some uh, my friend came, but uh, she started a business in Honduras um, to uh, help women who have no money uh, be able to sew quilts. And it's called One Common Thread. And uh, she has these women make these little pieces of fabric and they sew them all together and then they sell them here in the United States. And so in an area where it's very poor, uh, they do that. And then in another uh, uh, thing that she just did last uh, over three weeks ago while the virus was going on, was she started to distribute uh, a, like a food co-op and it started with just 20 families that they wanted to try to get some food to every week. And then it's continued to grow. And now the money, the people they buy, get a box of food every week. And the, the most people can pay, but there's now 272 people they distribute food toward. And the Lord, money that comes, money that comes yeah, goes yeah. to the 
You turn on your video. Maybe we can hear from you, Aya. We miss Aya. Aya. Thank you so much, Martin, for uh, the very nice lesson that we uh, we learned. You're welcome, Gemma. <laughs> I'm a reality agent. I, I sell raw lambs. You sell what? Lambs. Lamb. Lambs. <laughs> oh, very good. Oh, nice. Very good. Do you have a, a portion of that that sells online or is it all in store? Uh, online. And I go to, no, this time around, I go online because uh, I cannot go out. We are in extreme quarantine. In yeah. our area. Everybody, <laughs> we, us too. <laughs> are you, are you, what percentage of your business is online now? And what was it maybe two years ago? Well, actually, uh, uh, this is the, the first time that I go online because, you know, I, I uh, met my uh, client every now and then. And uh, this is the first time that that I do full time online. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, but then, uh, yeah. There. Well, I have actually a client that will be coming coming from the Japan be before the lockdown. But then again, we res reschedule it for yeah. I think May. <laughs> There's a lot to learn about taking your business online, and I admire you for yeah. doing that. That's yeah. great. Oh, well, we cannot do anything but to <laughs> hold the yeah. net right now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly. But it's really nice then. I have to climb the summit on my own. That's right. <laughs> That's it. We're all figuring out how to climb. By the way, first, you're very beautiful. <laughs> What's that? She says, Kim is very beautiful. Ah, yes, she is. Yeah. She's my inspiration, my muse. <laughs> Thank you so much, anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Gemma. Mm -hmm. I'm also doing a broadcast, Anchor Lady, and, uh, and I have to uh, say this one to, I'm also a, a nine, FM I didn't quite hear all of that, but it sounds like you have a lot of things going on. A lot. I have a lot of groups. <laughs> Very good. It's great to be uh, connected and to have a video conference with so many people so far away it's amazing and to feel and be connected to you is wonderful yeah thank you some of them i didn't meet too <laughs> the first time i met them <laughs> this is a perfect time this is a wonderful time and you can get uh, just connected with this uh, with these wonderful people um by the way, somebody has uh, made the background for his screen, the book, the ebook. So those of you who haven't downloaded the ebook, make sure that you get yeah, in touch yeah. with your coordinators, inspiring products and services that were born out of crisis. Stories of Saral Motor, Ever Belena, Mercury Drug, great stories that would really inspire you. Um, and so uh, get a copy, download the, the ebook, it's available now. It's our gift for all of you, our wonderful SGMB and ACE graduates. And uh, mark your calendars. Our next webinar will be April 22. April 22. Uh, I was on the phone for about an hour um, with yes. Salve Dupato. Okay. Um, all right, so we're going to have Salve. <laughs> on the money, uh, 
And, 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 and as we know, she is a financial advisor and she hosts a TV program on our major channel here in the Philippines. And uh, she's going to be our next speaker. Hi, Sister Salve. 9 a.m. Uh, same time. And uh, this, her topic is Cash is King. Why is money management now and after the lockdown? Okay. So that's going wow. to be fun, my friend. That's going to be fun. So well, somebody making sure that this is recorded. So it is recorded and we will make it available on our website. And you can download this and hear Michael and Martin again and Robert's messages. And uh, just like what you asked a while ago, can we share it? Please go ahead and share it. Uh, a lot of our chapter members are probably uh, not wasn't able to join in, so they'll have the wonderful opportunity to uh, to listen and and review the lessons. Review the lessons. Wow! 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 We have uh, James. Yes. Who's ano po ito yung topic? Uh, si brother Apo po ito. Yes. Yes. Uh, ano po ito yung topic ni Sister Salve Duplita? Yung yung team ng next webinar. Why is money? Yeah, why is money management? Oh, okay. Para financial stewardship. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. That's Sir Salve, na miss ko po kayo. Uh, can you still remember me when I was a young man in Bago Bantay Ward? Kanina yan, kanina yan. Kay Sister Salve po. Nandito po ba siya? No, Salve is not uh, here right now. Ay, okay. Uh, Hello, nandito po siya. <laughs> But she will be. She will be our our next uh, our next speaker. So that's uh, that's exciting. Robert, thank you so much. Um, yeah, if you need to. Uh, thank you all. I need to go. Yes, I know. Robert, I need to go. Um, it's such a pleasure to meet you all, and thank you for letting us. Uh, thank you all for joining this webinar. And Good night, over there. <laughs> thank you, Robert. Good night. It's night time. Well, good day for you. Good night for us. Yes. Yeah. Thank you bye so bye. much for the inspiration today. My thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Bye bye. Bye bye, everyone. Oh, thank you, thank you. Michael, you're still with us. Maybe you can give your workshop now. <laughs> no. Oh, Michael, I have a question. Oh. Hi, James. I yes. have a question for I think, Michael. I think there is a question through the Q&A. Yes. Uh, well, maybe, I don't know if it's for all or for the panelists. Uh, just uh, just mentioning it oh yeah we have a lot of questions uh, I don't think we'll have all the time to answer them now uh, but uh, yes but we will de you. Michael de we will get in touch with you after this and we will schedule the um, the webinar with you uh, so it's gonna we'll, we'll give you as much uh, so everybody is just excited about digital marketing and so that's going to be that's going to be an awesome awesome training yeah yeah of course uh, just uh, uh, you use do you use whatsapp we do we yeah. do whatsapp yeah, yeah WhatsApp. Maybe, maybe you can add me uh, and we can uh, talk through whatsapp and we can figure out the next what number to share with all of you uh, actually, I make trainings, online trainings right now. So uh, my my business uh, are, co are are customers that have business, and if their business are closed because they can sell, uh, what I did was uh, to make my knowledge uh, and make courses, online courses, and the people are paying me for those kind of trainings. Right. And also the people. Uh, but, but look at this. What all of you can start making right now is creating a fan page on Facebook, Instagram, and use your cell phone. I use 
too much this cell phone to create video contents of too much value so that people can uh, apply to their business. And if they see that that works for them, when I am gonna sell them a online course, they will be willing to pay for that because they taste a, a little part of value content. So that's, the, that's something that all we can do right now. Make value content, share it in social media, and you will see how the people will answer, will reply, reply you, into even they will share your post with others. So start making value content in social media and you will get a brand awareness. That's a really important uh, concept that we need to start making right now in this quarantine, okay? And we will see with James uh, another opportunity so we can uh, share with you all these concepts and I'm pretty sure you can use them and get to, uh, some customers uh, through all this. Quick question for some of you. Can you understand what all what I am uh, saying right now? It's good for yes, you? Michael. Yes, yes Michael. Yes. Okay. That's Thank only you so what much. I need. <laughs> I need to, <laughs> that, that you can understand everything I say. <laughs> what, what day is there today in Colombia, uh, Michael, so I can take your conversion? Uh, today we have Thursday, Thursday 9.52 p.m. Oh, all right. so it's like Provo, huh? So it's, uh, all right, we're, we're a day ahead. Um, Michael, Michael, when the end, 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 Monday, April 20, night time for you, is Tuesday, April 21 for us. Uh, so will Monday, April 20, same time that we had right now, will that work for you? Okay, Monday. I, okay, Monday, April, Monday. Okay. I think, yeah, I think it works for me, actually. I have okay. a workshop at uh, 23, 24, 25. So we can okay. we don't have problem on April 20, yeah. 20. Yeah. So when we started today, when we started at nine, what time was that for you? The eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. So it's eight o'clock for you, eight p.m. for you Monday night. It's Tuesday 21, 9 a.m. for us. All right. So there you go. Okay, we go. Let's have that. So those of you who are still listening in, so mark that on your calendars. Uh, a digital marketing um, webinar with Michael for the Philippines. That's April 21. That's a Tuesday, 9 a.m. Okay. Yay. <laughs> Thank that's you. That's the day before Salve Duplito. All right. So we're going to have back to back. So we'll have, okay, there you go. Michael already wrote it down on his planner. So it's a date for all Digital of us. Marketing. All right, it's a date for all of us. Uh, That's very nice. <laughs> Thank you so much for that schedule. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to make uh, Michael go without a schedule. So thank you, Michael. So That's 20 yet for you, 8 p.m., that's Tuesday, 9 a.m. for all of us here in the Philippines, okay? Okay, I'm ready. So I sent I sent you to my Facebook profile so you can add me and you can follow up all the content I am sharing with my friends on Facebook and it works really good for me in these uh, times. So we will talk about all this uh, on 20 April, 8 p.m. from Colombia, 9 a.m. Thursday from Philippines. <laughs> yeah, Tuesday for us. Tuesday. Awesome. Thursday. Okay. <laughs> so, 
Oh, it's a date, Michael. It's a date. Everybody's excited about this one. It's so we'll, a date. Uh, yeah, we'll spread the word. We'll spread the word. And uh, we have a lot of people still joined in. And uh, they're now marking it on their calendars. And uh, we will make sure that we send out the invitations. And we'll have this webinar recorded again. And so we'll have the expert teach us about digital marketing. Wow, Michael, thank you so much. You have been thank you, James. To you, I will I will prepare the the invitation uh, so you can share them, share, uh, share it for groups of WhatsApp or whatever you you use. Okay, All right, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do it. We'll do it. I gotta so, go, but it was a pleasure. All right, we will send you. Uh, we will email you the uh, the webinar ID for this one. Okay. So I don't know if Lloyd has your email ad. Does, does Lloyd have your email address? Yeah, he has my email. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, we'll let you go. And I will see you Monday, your day. Tuesday, our day. Thank you, Bye -bye. Michael. Bye-bye.